Hello everyone, once again it's Samus here. Today I just want to give you two points why evolution is completely false and not even a science. Now why do I say that? Because this is like a huge statement because there are so many scientists who have studied from you know prestigious universities who have believed that they have proved that evolution is actually true and a science. So like I said, I'm gonna give you two points which proves that evolution is completely false. Okay, the first point which I'm going to give you, the reason why evolution is not science and is completely false, is that the evolutionists and the scientists tell us that life began on Earth by the formation of algae on rocks because they had a problem in terms of, you know, trying to explain how did life change from inorganic matter which was the rocks to organic matter which was singular cell systems such the algae and the bacteria so this this is not science and and it cannot be proved to be a proof that evolution i mean life on earth started that way i'll give you an example you can build a house anyone who has seen a house walls or a rock which were clean and then you can after a few years or even probably a few months you can start to see algae growing on the wall or on a rock which you don't have algae on it so it means that even today in our time we do see that algae can form on a rock or on a wall it proves that we can see even now in a time that algae can form on rocks and on a wall now, why is that a problem for the evolutionists? Well, the problem is that if algae was, you know, if algae was the origin of life in the time when life began about 650 million years ago, as they say, the time when the life started, how then do you prove that at the time when this algae was forming on rocks on Earth, when there was no life, how do you prove that? indeed there was no any other life there was no trees there was no plants and there was no animals because even in our conditions in the conditions that we have today algae still forms on rocks and walls you see there so it's a problem because the scientists and the evolutionists cannot exclusively prove that at the time when the algae which they are talking about formed there was no life because as Christians, we believe that God created the earth and God created life on the earth. I mean that life did not originate from algae. So how do you prove exclusively to make this real to say that at this time there was no life? But the problem is that because there was no one at the time when this thing was happening about 650 million years ago, you cannot prove it. But us we can completely say it is false because algae still forms on walls. So you have algae which forms on rocks and then, you know, on, on walls. But you have no ape which is changing from an ape to a human being. So the one part does not happen in our time. The other part happens. And the other part which happens, that's the origin of life, according to scientists and evolutionists. And the, the other part which we cannot see, which doesn't happen, that's how we evolved from apes to human beings. Do you see that? Do you see that it's an error they believe there? Because it's a mere assumption. It's, a mere, it's, it's, a, it's just taking what already exists and saying this is what it proves. It proves that that's, life, that's how life began. I'm not saying it does not prove that that life could have begun like that. I'm saying that how do you prove that at the time when this algae was forming on rocks, there was no life around the algae, life from plants, life from animals. And because you cannot prove that exclusively to say that this exclusively happened without any life happening or without any life existing around the algae because this is your thesis you're saying that life started this way life started by the formation of algae on rocks that's where life you know changed from inorganic matter to organic matter 
and somebody comes with their own thesis and say, well, that was not the beginning of life. Life was already there when the algae was forming on the rocks. And he gives you an example and say, you see, now we have life, I'm here, but there is algae forming on a wall, a house built by a man. Do you see that? Now, how do you, first of all, you have to do two things. You have to prove the thesis of the person who's making a thesis, which is an antithesis to you, what you said happened. You have to prove that the way that he's saying that, you know, algae forms, even in the conditions that which we have right now, you have to prove that as false. That that's not what happens. But you cannot disprove it because you can see for yourself that algae does form on walls, on houses built by men. Now, 650 million years ago, if that's really, if they really happened, algae could have formed on rocks while there was still life. There were still other plants. There were still other forms of bacteria. There were still human beings and animals. And algae was forming on the rocks. Thus, this thesis that life began with algae forming on rocks is not false in itself. Because, well, you have a rock and life begins. But it was not life in terms of life in general. It was life in terms of the life of the algae. Like if you were to take a seed and plow it, and then a tree grows. That's the beginning of life for that tree. But it's not the beginning of life in general. So you have to see the difference. You have to see the difference between the beginning of life of a species or of a human being or of a plant and the div and the, the form I mean the beginning of a life in terms of life in general, the very origin of life. So in saying that life could have formed from inorganic matter to organic matter from algae forming on rocks, it is not false. It is true because you are saying that this is a rock, but life is forming on it. But that that say that this algae was the, was the first sign of life on the earth. Can this be proven exclusively that when this algae was growing on rocks, it was the first sign of life. There was no life anywhere else. There were no plants. There were no human beings. There were no fish. There were no birds. There were no any other form of animal on the earth. Can that be proven? It cannot be proven. Because for you to prove it, you would have to be there when it happened. Just like when we're looking at algae forming on a wall or on a rock, we are there to observe it and even record it because you can record it on your own wall. When a wall leaks and the water comes into the house, algae can form on the wall. So you can take pictures or take videos of there was no algae, there is algae. So it is scientific. You don't even have to be a scientist to prove this. But this one, the scientists, when they're saying that that's how the beginning of life in general, that the very sign of life began. That's not, it's this, this, this thing about algae growing on rocks does not prove that that was the very beginning of life form. It doesn't prove it. It merely does prove that yes, organic matter can come from inorganic matter. That's in the formation of algae on rocks. So that's the first reason why I'm saying that is evolution is completely false and not even a science and because the reason why i'm saying it's not a science is because there was assumptions we made that this is how life could have been formed but it is taught as if it's fact and it's taught as if it is something that they have seen that they have proved that that's how it happened so that's not science because science you don't assume you make a thesis and you prove it 
but they cannot prove that that is how life indeed started. That's the first reason. The formation of algae on rocks does not prove that that is the first sign of life on earth because they cannot prove that at that time when the algae was forming, which of course they didn't see, there was no any other life from plants, from trees, from fish, from birds around the algae. Just like we can see today that algae can form on walls from bricks built by men while there is other forms of life like us around it while it happens. So the second reason why I'm saying that you know evolution is completely false and it's not even a science is that they talk about how evolution when it happens is that they, you have a genetic mutation of a species in which a species can grow an ability to do something in which after the species has grown this ability to do something through genetic mutation its offspring you know its next generation of species will be able to perform that which the species has you know mutated to be able to do for example we could say that if a fish grows legs and that's that walk on land that is evolution we can say if a human being miraculously grow wings and now becomes able to fly like a bird that is evolution that also is completely false I'll tell you why it's completely false and because I'm using real science I'm not a scientist but I'm using real science in the algae that is real science you can prove you can look at algae growing on a wall with bricks you know built by men now I'm gonna prove to you that this is thing that there's a genetic mutation and then you, you, you grow a new kind of capacity or to be able to perform a certain function which your offspring will automatically be able to do based on the fact that they are your offspring and they have your genes. This is completely false. I'll give you one. If you were to take a child, a newborn child and live it with animals, that child is going to completely act like an animal if the animal is a dog that child is gonna act like a dog now if evolution was to be true that we were once monkeys and then we stood on two legs that means the next generation of our offspring must be able automatically to stand on two legs but we have seen this before children raised by animals they can't even speak they can't even use the full you know the capacities of their brain the way that a human human being is able to you see but by the scientific theory this evolution theory that in the next generation of a species by virtue of it being an offspring of a species which was not able to fly at once but grew disability this the next generation automatically must be able to fly you see but we say that all these things happen because of observing experience and learning and doing like wise meaning that a human child looks at the adults and see that the adults are walking on two legs but because the child does not have the strength in his body to be able to stand on two legs. It starts to use four limbs, the hands and the legs. But the child has a goal to say that I want to be like my mother. I want to be like my father and stand on two legs. So eventually as it uses its capacities, which are the limbs, the limbs get stronger. The same way as a man who when he lifts weights, the muscles get stronger so even a child also gets stronger so eventually the child will be able to stand on two legs why because the child observed it saw it experienced and then from there it does like wise but if this child was to be raised by monkeys which of course we say that's where we come from this child is gonna behave like monkeys why doesn't the child stand on two legs if it does not see any other thing around it, stand on two legs, even though it's an offspring of 
a species which stands on two legs. And by evolution, explanation, and theory, they are saying that this child must automatically be able to stand on two legs because it has the genes which have evolved and formed a new capacity, a new function, which it did not have previously. And of course, the evolutionists can say that, well, even in evolution, you still have to learn because what the scientists do is that they always adapt their definition of sense to what is going on so that it could go on and on. So they, they're going to say that, well, even in evolution, even though you might have the capacity, you still have to develop from a teaching, observing, and all in this sense. But if you're saying that that's what, that is what must happen in evolution, then it's a problem for evolution. Why? Because it means that the first, this transition from a, an ape, which was on four legs, and then from there started to stand, it means that it had to be taught to do that. But the problem is that at the time, there was no ape doing that. So how did it do that? So the first ape, according to evolution, will by its own ingenuity, its own cleverness, stand on two legs. For whatever there is, maybe it was trying to reach a fruit or something. So it will be able to stand on two legs without seeing any other ape doing it. And as time goes, its genes mutate. And then it has now fully grown a new ability, a new capacity to stand on two legs. Now it means that it will be impossible for any offspring of this ape to devolve unless there's such a thing as devolve. Because to go back now as a human being to walk on four limbs is going back to the monkeys while evolution should be going forward. Not backwards, because it's genes. Genes cannot, unless maybe we can say that genes can devolve. But the problem is that if genes can devolve, it should be looked at as a disability, not a devolution. But if we want to say it's a devolution, okay, I'll give you that. Then let's say that this child, is it a devolution or was it caused by the dogs walking for limbs? So you have to be able to say it was devolution because if this child was raised by human beings on two legs, then we can say maybe it's devolution because the child was able to see what the other humans are doing but was unable to do what the other human beings are doing. But then how are you going to separate that from disability to devolution because there are people who are disabled who cannot do what other human beings are doing because they have a disability. Do you see that? So, because we have already, and we can already establish scientifically that a child learns, observes, and do like once, and it's not evolution, that's why a child raised by dogs will behave like dogs, because it's looking at the dogs, it's observing the dogs, and it's copying what the dogs do. It's, it, it's, if it was evolution, it should be able to say, I'm a human being, and use this genetic mutation which it inherited from his parents who are walking on two legs and be able to walk without ever seeing anyone or anything walk on two legs. And so because even in this case, the evolutionists and the scientists have made assumptions, then that means they're not scientists. They're just making assumptions. Or it's more about you have scientific prophets like Charles Darwin, Richard Dawkins, and Stephen Hawking, and all these disciples of science are merely walking in their footsteps, which are proving everything that I've said for themselves. So in that, in everything that I've said, that is proof that evolution is not even a science, and it's completely false. You can argue, but you cannot, you have first, first remember, don't just argue and say scientists have proved it, and we have done all these things. Prove first, two points which you must prove scientifically. Prove first, how did life change from inorganic matter to organic matter without having any life around it? Because I've said that you can have algae growing on walls and walls are built by human beings. Which means that 
algae can grow on walls while there's still life around it. There's still plants, there's human beings, there's animals, there's space, there's fish. You have to prove that at the time which you estimate that life started 650 million years ago, when the algae was growing on the rocks, there were no animals, there were no plants, there were no fish, there were no birds. That's the first point which you have to prove scientifically. The second point. The second point you have to prove that every species which inherit a new ability or a new capacity from its parents, which evolved by starting to do this thing in terms of the ape standing on two legs. Automatically, the generation which is to come will have the capacity to stand on two legs without observing other same species as itself doing the same thing. Because an animal raised a, a human being, the human being behaves like the animal. The human being raised a human being, the human being behaves like a human being. You have to be able to separate both scientifically. But if evolution involves learning, observing, and doing likewise, then you're going to need the first evolved ape to be taught. And then the question becomes, who taught it? If they were teaching, then evolution is false. Because it means everything that we do as human beings, we see, we observe, we learn, we do likewise. That is teaching. That is development. It's not evolution. But if you cannot scientifically prove this, but merely argue in with the previous statements which were made or taking this definition of evolution and adapting to a problem which arises against it, you are proving that evolution is false. But because it has so much power in the school system, in the academy of the sciences, in all countries, and people go to school to learn it, not to observe it, not to study it and critique it and see the logic of it and so that they could question and prove it for themselves, you always gonna make people believe that evolution is true without having themselves proven it to be true. Anyway, that is all that I have to say about this topic. Two points why evolution is completely false and not even a science. So if you have anything to say, I know that the atheists will have a lot of things to say, you can leave your comment below. And if you love to receive content like this, you can also subscribe to my channel so you can continue receiving content like this. Thank you for listening.